name is Yuri Suzuki. Um, and it's really honored to be here. Thanks so much for the invitation. Uh, my background is kind of artist and designer and musician. And even me, it's really hard to categorize myself what I'm doing, actually. And then I recently joined a company called Pentagram. Um, this kind of world largest kind of design consultancy, and I'm a US partner at the moment. I'm just like talking about what I have done before and chronologically I want to describe about what I, I'm doing. So I used to be um, part of the Meiwa Denki, like it's incredible Japanese artist, and uh, they are in the design lab a couple of years ago. I have been assistant for them. And after that, like, uh, I decided to be DJ. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not a very popular DJ, so I gave up. And uh, being a designer, and I moved to London to study at the product design. So, uh, last 10 years, I'm working quite a lot of abstract projects and uh, working for like where I am to making mechanical musical instruments and making uh, like a dancing robot for music video, or, like making radio from tube map, just super, super abstract things. But always I'm like fascinated about sound because my background is like music and I tried to train as a musician in the beginning. And then I combined together with how I can merge into the design skill and sound and design. And I just like introduced a couple of projects how like, I'm problem solving through the sound. Um, so like one project for music for dyslexic. I'm actually dyslexic. I have got so much problem for reading and writing. And also the biggest problem for me for training as a musician is kind of I can read any musical score. And I used to be a band when I was a teenager, a ska music band. And um, I loved it at that time. But I got fired because I couldn't read any musical score at that time. So it drove me to creating sort of making a musical notation even dyslexic people are going to understand. And one day I found a really beautiful musical notation designed by Toru Takemitsu, and he tried to describe music as in a shape and composition and also color. And I highly inspired for this project, and I started to like kind of like researching myself what could work. So in the beginning, how I can mapping out color, how people can imagine like a note, like kind of higher pitch sound, like a um, like lower pitch sound. And the music has got duration time for each sound, and the gap between sound and sound, that basic component making music. And here's my method. So basically, this black line is kind of length of the song. So if you interact with like colors, this white card is leading color and the playback sound. So basically, you are drawing, but at the same time, like you can compose like a music. So like this is the kind of a final result. So I'm going to show you a video. Maybe I could do a bit volume up. So this installation is a kind of a people to draw in picture and collaborate with drawing picture, but same time we're composing music together, sort of like jamming. And the next, next project called Ototo. So Ototo is kind of small like a PCB board, like it looks like that. So basically like this was kind of my passion when I was a teenager. So I always wanted to make amazing musical instruments myself. But uh, because I'm so clumsy person, I never able to build anything. And also I'm super bad at coding as well. So kind of wishing to have sort of like a platform like anyone can make a musical instrument quite easily. And it drove me to make this project. So it's a really simple structure. If you like keyboard, like has got a lot of different sound. And if you're connecting with each key to like something conductive material, like such as water, plant, and a spoon, it's conductive. And the banana as well. then you can play back sound. So, so now I have got here. So if you touch like this object, actually you can play back sound. So like you can play like that. So it's quite easy. Um, 
<laughs> so the reason why like, I tried to make this project is really open platform and the people easy to use. So we did a lot of like, workshop in the university. This is, came from ECAO in Switzerland. So these students, the product design students, and they don't have much knowledge about programming and so on, but uh, you can quickly learn and make a really amazing projects such as like musical balloon. And uh, some student no mechanical knowledge may be making like a drum machine, a mechanical drum machine. And also like musical bike as well. So this auto tool is really easy to make prototyping and making like musical instruments quickly. So like this is kind of like a project I have been working on. And today I want to talk about more about sound design. And it is really difficult to understand what sound design is about. Some people are understanding as, uh, you know, like uh, some like, like kind of like a sci-fi like music sound or something. Like a, but the, actually, my definition of the sound design is slightly different. So if you want to see this, it would be great. So I found on the YouTube called the most annoying alarm clock in the world. And, um, but my point I want to talk about it in here is how people want to waking up. You know, like it's the beginning of the day, something celebration of the day. It has to be something provocative as well because you have to wake up. But at the same time, you don't want to have stressful sound to waking up. And, um, and also, then like, I'm slowly realized, like, such as companies have this amazing like, focus on like, technical development of product design, but however, sound part hasn't been investigated enough yet. And I really respect um, Nokia, has got amazing history about developing product and also interface design. However, um, if you recognize this sound, That's a journey of 20 years of like Nokia tone, and it doesn't really change sound at all. And then something I have to say is actually this song is originally came from a really like beautiful song called the Grand Vals, like composed by like a Spanish guitarist. And then this is a really nice song. So something I want to say in here, that even really beautiful music in the beginning, but the like, human brain hates repetition. So if you have like, repeated listening, that sound became your nerve. But some company like Microsoft, like, like, they actually have to keep updating like, sound when they have a major update of operation system. And one of the remarkable songs came from Windows 95. Can you guess who composed this music? That's actually Brian Eno. And then, so that's kind of one of the most beautiful <laughs> startup sound on the computer, I feel like. And then I'm just talking about a bit of bad example, like this famous bit of bad design as well. So in, I'm living in London, and I'm unfortunate, maybe luckily, I can find so much bad sound design in London. And the Dockland Rail Service is one of the, one of the kind of relatively new rail service in, the, in, in London. And if you listen to this sound. This is Fortress. So this sound actually 2,200 hertz, and uh, it is that kind of drastically vibrating your, your, your eardrum. So it shouldn't be used for public like, you know, transport sound design. And then, um, 
like I found something very really beautiful example from Switzerland, and Switzerland has got some like a uh, train has got a carriage has got you can adjust the volume of the kind of your uh, like announcement sound. So that's uh, I think one of the very really beautiful example. And then uh, of course like product designer consider about sound design as well. Like Richard Sapat's Keto, I feel feel like this is one of the revolutionary design. So Keto usually has got one whistle and has got a really high pitch sound. But this Keto has got two whistles and has got making harmony when the water is boiled. And I have got really inspired from this project and made this project called Musical Keto. This looks like Musical Keto. <laughs> so Musical Keto, and when the water is boiled, actually can play your favorite music. This is really, really early prototype. It doesn't really make sense as a music. But, uh, but something I want to say from here is kind of it is really difficult to kind of designing sound quite objective view because like each person has got like favorite sound and favorite kind of like a favor in the sound. So and also like sound is one of the closest sense to like your brain. It is really really difficult to design something everyone is comfortable with. So this is a kind of proposal that kind of personalize your favorite sound. And then also like I want to talk about between sound and noise. And this is a really amazing project from Japan called Melody Roads. So basically, this like, road has got texture, and if you're driving cars, that texture is making vibration and making music. And if you can imagine, like, sort of order in the noise, and like, people is actually recognize the music instead of noise. And uh, I'm kind of like, highly inspired from this and making project called how, how to Make Noise Better project. So basically, I bought London Taxi, and it has got a lot of speaker in here. <laughs> and uh, on top of the car has got microphone, very really high definition cars. So like, what we have done is kind of driving around London, and there's so much noise in here, but it's according to like, recording sound, the algorithm to change into the music. So basically, we try to fill it with like, sound, in the, like, noise time into the music. So like, this is sound coming from that. I, I think this is from South Kensington. That's some ambient music coming down. And then that back to 2012, we drove this car around London, and then each street has a totally different music because it depends on the algorithm. And also, I want to talk about a bit about psychological effect to the human from sound. So this is a Hawaiian noise. It's quite like a, it has got a lot of properties because first of all, it can delete the noise, but at the same time, it has got a really fascinating property in this sound. There she is. She's crying. But then. <laughs> So something fascinating about it, they put the keyword on YouTube called calm down baby in 15 seconds or something. So many parents try to create white noise to calm down baby. Because the reason why like, babies calm down is because white noise is quite similar to inside of the mother's body. So that's a really interesting phenomenon. And uh, I created like, one project called white noise trumpet. It's really inspired from this phenomenon. 
So basically, it looks like that. So if you blew into like, this trumpet, it doesn't make any noise. Like basically, making white noise, and also this uh, coin to amplify the sound and uh, make it like that. So when the baby cried, using like this one to calm down baby. Okay, and this is the final topic I'm talking about. So I strongly think like sound is one of the most strong communication tools. Like uh, I think that's the reason I joined the Pentagram as well, like expanding field of the sound. And the one project I have been working last year is called Sonic Playground. That's a commission project by like Atlanta Museum called High Museum. So the task for this project is to kind of merge into the people, local people and into the kind of gathering in the art space. And some people are not interested in art or like no design, but uh, I tried to design a playground which is you can actively communicate and play, playing with sound. So this trumpet structure, if you talk into that, your voice is going to be delivered in a really unusual way. So you can have unexpected communication you can have with people like you don't know. And uh, it has been quite successful, and it's traveling around the like, uh, um, US now. <laughs> and uh, finally, I'm going to talk about this project, the Acid Brexit. Uh, I'm living in England for 14 years. I still love it. And then, um, but as you most of you know, like uh, England gonna be going to something wrong things now. I feel my opinion. And then, yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like something I want to say is uh, one particular music genre. How, do you know anyone uh, know music genre called acid house? Yeah. yeah. So Acid House is a really interesting music genre. It came from the 90s, and uh, it made a huge movement called uh, Second Summer of Love. And apparently it has got a lot of bad, like, uh, negative side as well, like some people have got drug and so on. But I do think this music genre is one of the kind of sort of protest music and used to like, a young generation to express their expression. And uh, I thought it was a really interesting music genre, I feel. But in the 90s, um, has got so much negative campaigns happening in the media, and the evil government forbidden acid house parties. If you see like, a newspaper like showing like this one, like, welcome to acid house, go to hell, in the way. And, uh, but something I want to say, like at that time, music has got so much kind of messaging here. Like major like acid house producer like Psychic TV or KLF, Underground Resistance, they always have got kind of political opinion against for something. And then now I feel like quite similar situation now because the 90s also has got quite huge depression. The conservative government took over. And then now, like I made a song called Acid Brexit. So, <laughs> I want to do some contribution to the UK, and I would love the UK as a country. And uh, music itself has got a lot of power, and also it could be used for protest as well. So I made this like, record. And then, like, basically, like, this is really like, a, like not really like, kind of sophisticated music, really chunky like, dance music, but still like, people that use for like dance party, but kind of reminding what we are facing in the next couple of weeks. So I'm just playing a couple of songs. It's, to be honest, not very sophisticated songs, but if you listen, it'll be great. The £350 million pounds a week we send to the EU, which we will no longer send to the EU, can you guarantee that's going to go to the NHS? No, I can't, and I, and I would never have made that claim. That was one of the mistakes I think the, the Leave campaign made. Well, Hold I, on a moment, that was one of your adverts. Well, it wasn't one of my adverts, I can assure well, you. Well, that was one of the Leave campaign's adverts. It was. Adverts. It was. But it that was, money was going to go to the NHS. And I think they made a mistake. That's why people. Made all the mistakes. 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 Mistake, 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 mistake,
I brought a couple of copy, couple of copy to design that. So in case anyone play DJing, I can give you a couple of copy as well. And uh, so thanks so much for invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.